The ocean is a place that I've always had a fascination with. It's one of the most diverse and colourful habitats on the planet. So I decided I'd try replicate this at home so I could understand the relationships and the rivalries that form under the ocean that we never get to see. So follow along on this cinematic journey of learning and mistakes. This is my shallow reef tank. The first thing on the agenda is to decide where to put it, then something to put it on, and of course the tank itself. Then we will need some sand and rocks to give us a hardscape so life such as seaweed and coral can grow. Then finally our fish. Well, probably some water first. Then the fish. And just like that, we have a living ecosystem. So let's get started with chapter one. We managed to find this old cabinet lying around, and even though it wasn't in the best shape, it had the perfect dimensions to fit a tank that we had found online. So after a quick message with the owner, and going to collect it, we got to work. Surprisingly the tank was in good shape, so all we had to do was give it a clean. We had to evict a couple of tenants from the cabinet, and give it a good sand. A lot of sanding. Then before long, we had it looking good as new. Well, almost. Once the tank was cleaned out, we moved them both into place. Next, we had to design our hardscape using ocean rock. It was vital that we created a suitable layout for the reef before gluing it all together. Then into the tank they went on top of some egg crate to protect the glass. We followed with the sand to create the seabed. Packing it between all the caves and crevices. And creating a slope out to the wide ocean beyond the reef. And finally water. In it went. We then added our equipment along with some beneficial bacteria for the tank. And now, all we had to do was wait. After a few days of waiting, we tested the water and it was all good to go, so we added our first forms of life, phytoplankton and copepods. Phytoplankton is a microscopic marine algae, and it'll form the basis of life in our ecosystem. Copepods are a form of zooplankton, and they're essential for any properly functioning marine habitat. They feed on phytoplankton, along with other species of pest algae that we don't want in our reef. After giving our new friends some time to settle in, it was finally time to add some colour into the tank. These are macroalgae, or as you probably know it, seaweed. These will grow in a beautiful variety of colours and provide shelter, and clean the tank by absorbing waste. When they weren't floating away, that is. Messing around with the tank made it cloudy, so we left it to settle for a few days before adding anything else in. Finally the moment we've all been waiting for. 
time where we introduce our first fish to the ecosystem. And where better to start than with the yellow goby? These awkward little rock dwellers come from the eastern coastlines off the Pacific Ocean, from the Great Barrier Reef that spans the eastern coast of Australia, right up along the Philippines and as far as the southern islands of Japan, which is where they get the nickname the Okinawa Gobi. We acclimatized them and added them in over the rocks, so they had something familiar to swim to. After they got their bearings, we decided they needed some friends. Next is the cleanup crew, the Turbo Snails. These guys hail from the rocky shores of the Eastern Pacific, where strong currents and endless algae keep them busy. We placed them near the rocks and within moments they were off exploring every crevice. In a reef tank, they serve the same purpose, tirely scouring sand, rock, and most importantly, the glass for every hint of algae. Next, it was time to add something a little stranger. The zombie snail. Buried beneath the sand, they lie still and unseen, waiting for the scent of food to drift by. The moment it does, they rise from the sand, stretching out their long siphons and gliding towards their target. Native to warm tropical waters, these snails play an important role in keeping the reef floor clean, devouring leftover food before it can decay. They might look eerie when they emerge from the sand, but they're some of the hardest working members of the cleanup crew. Finally, it was time to add the coral. They absorb all the waste in the water left behind by the fish and they use it, along with light, to grow. In the wild, the long polyps of these colourful hammer corals provide shelter and safe refuge for the fish living in the reef. The green trumpet coral release a stress mucus to protect themselves when they first move into a reef, but they soon relax and begin to photosynthesize. The purple and green Kenya trees withdraw their polyps to protect themselves from danger, but they too quickly begin to settle into their new home and stretch out to feed. We added a great variety of zoanthid and mushroom corals to adorn the reef, bringing their vibrant colour to the rocks. And we even get some unexpected visitors. A feather worm comes out to meet its new neighbours. That is a Xenia pulse, high up on the rocks, feeding on the water column. And to help the snails keep up with all the cleaning, a starfish joins the shallow reef. It explores its new environment on tiny tube feet, moving slowly as it eats algae and small pests. And now for something a little bit faster. Hermit crabs. These curious shell dwellers are found on almost every coast on earth and will live among the snails and fish, picking up the heavier bits of dirt the others can't eat and sifting through the sand. and generally getting in the way.
To keep up with the feeding demands of the coral, we had better add more fish. These zebra-striped Bangai cardinal fish found around the Indonesian archipelago will bob around the water looking altogether a bit grumpy about things. But they should be happy in their new home. I find it really interesting how the stripe goes through their eyes. And joining them will be some clownfish. Maybe the most well-known fish on Earth, these clumsy swimmers love the sheltered shallows of the Pacific. Mainly living in a symbiotic relationship with the newest addition to the reef, the anemone. This rose bubble tip anemone is not a coral at all, but an invertebrate, and can move around the reef as it pleases using its large foot. Likely it will find a little nook where it's safe and stay there for most of its life. And our resident doctor on the reef, the humble skunk cleaner shrimp. They are the happiest when fish come by its cave for a clean, as in the wild it feeds mainly off parasites living on the fish. And this flowerpot coral, or Goniopora, enjoys letting its polyps flow with the waves. It may take some time for the clownfish to host the anemone, but once they do, they become inseparable. Time to shake things up a bit. A yellow watchman goby. He will make a fine addition to this shallow reef, along with his buddy, the banded pistol shrimp. The unusual pair have been best friends since baby school, and although they are very different, for them, their differences are a strength. The brilliant eyesight of the watchman, paired with the strong snapping claws of the pistol shrimp, make a formidable pair for any intending attackers. They are a bit apprehensive to join the reef at first, due to the curious clownfish hanging about to see their new reef mates, but with a little help, in they go. And they will always have each other's backs. Well, most of the time. Soon enough, they find each other again and put their differences aside to make a new cave, a home buried under the rock. Thank <laughs> you. 
With the shallow reef filling up quick, it was time to create something out in the ocean. This lava rock, created from an eruption many thousands of years ago, will be perfect. We will use this to make a volcano island to sit in the seabed. And what better creature to inhabit it than a bright red flame scallop. All the way from the Caribbean Sea, its bright red tentacles each end with a single eye, searching for food and protected by its hard shell. And finally, one of the most colourful fish found anywhere in the ocean, the Mandarin Gobi. These incredible dragonets use their large pelvic fins to walk across the sea floor in search of copepods to eat, and can even hover in place like a hummingbird, staring out at the reef with its large eyes. This will be the final crowning species to inhabit our shallow reef. We hope he settles in well to his new home, and look forward to seeing how it develops over the coming months. Unfortunately, not everything went to plan along the way. Pests managed to make their way into the tank, such as Asterina starfish and Detritus worms. Our noble starfish suffered a loss of two of his limbs from the hermit crabs. But thankfully, he survived, and we are already seeing signs of healthy regrowth. Not all the corals made it either. As space became scarce on the reef and competition fierce, we had some casualties. But despite these setbacks, our macroalgae were thriving. along with the fish who had settled together and were now living peacefully amongst the rockwork. The cleanup crew was doing its job, most of the time. and the watchman was keeping a keen eye over our reef. If you've gotten this far, thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.